Grandma gets the medicine. Grandma sat hunched in her chair by the window. The wicked little eyes followed George closely as he crossed the room towards her. You're late, she snapped. I don't think I am, Grandma. But don't interrupt me in the middle of a sentence, she shouted. But you'd finish your sentence, Grandma. There you go again, she cried, always interrupting and arguing. You really are a tiresome little boy. What's the time? It's exactly eleven o'clock, Grandma. You're lying as usual. Stop talking so much. Give me my medicine. Shake the bottle first, then pour it in the spoon and make sure it's a whole spoonful. Are you going to gulp it down all in one go, Grandma? Or will you sip it? What I do is none of your business, the old woman said. Fill the spoon. As George removed the cork and began very slowly to pour the thick brown stuff into the spoon, he couldn't help thinking back upon all the mad and marvellous things that had gone into this crazy stuff. The shaving soap, the hair remover, the dandruff cure, the automatic machine washing powder, the flea powder for dogs, the shoe polish, the black pepper, the horseradish sauce, all the rest of them, not to mention the powerful animal pills and powders and liquids and the brown paint. Open wide, Grandma, he said, and I'll pop it in. The old hag opened her small wrinkled mouth, showing disgusting pale brown teeth. Here we go, George cried out, swallow it down, and he pushed the spoon well into her mouth and tipped the mixture down her throat. Then he stepped back to watch the result. It was worth watching. Grandma yelled, Owie! And her whole body shot well, whoosh, into the air. It was exactly as though someone had pushed an electric wire through the underneath of her chair and switched on the current. Up she went like a jack-in-the-box, and she didn't come down. She stayed up there, suspended in mid-air, about two feet up, still in a seating position, but rigid now, frozen, quivering, the eyes bulging, the hair standing straight up on end. Is something wrong, Grandma? George said politely. Are you all right? Suspended, up there in space, the old girl was beyond speaking. The shock that George's marvellous medicine had given her must have been tremendous. You'd have thought she'd have swallowed a red-hot poker the way she took off from that chair. Then she came down again with a plop back into her seat. Call the fire brigade, she shouted suddenly. My stomach's on fire! It's just the medicine, Grandma, George said. It's good, strong stuff. Fire! The old woman yelled. Fire in the basement! Get a bucket! Man the hoses! Do something! Quick! Cool it, Grandma, George said. But he got a bit of a shock when he saw smoke coming out of her mouth and out of her nostrils. Clouds of black smoke were coming out of her nose and blowing round the room. My golly, you really are on fire, George said. Of course I'm on fire, she yelled. I'll be burnt to a crisp, I'll be fried to a frizzled, I'll be boiled to a beetroot. George ran into the kitchen and came back with a jug of water. Open your mouth, Grandma, he cried. He could hardly see her for the smoke. But he managed to pour half a jugful down her throat. A sizzling sound, the kind you get from holding a hot frying pan under a cold tap, came from deep down in Grandma's stomach. The old hag bucked and shied and snorted. She gurgled and gasped. Spouts of water came shooting out of her and the smoke cleared away. Fire's out now, George announced proudly. You'll be all right, Grandma. All right, she yelled. Who's all right? There's jackie jumpers in my tummy. There's squiggles in my belly and there's bangers in my bottom. She began bouncing up and down the chair. Quite obviously, she was not very comfortable. You'll find it doing you a lot of good, that medicine, George said. Good, she screamed. Doing me good? It's killing me. Then she began to bulge. She was swelling up all over. She was pumping her up. She was puffing her up all over. She was someone was pumping her up. That's how it looked. Was she going to explode? Her face was turning from purple to green. But wait, she had a puncture somewhere. George could hear the hiss of air escaping. She stopped swelling. She was going down. She was slowly getting thinner again, shrinking back and slowly back to her shrivelly old self. How oh, things, Grandma? George said. No answer. Then a funny thing happened. Grandma's body gave a sudden sharp twist and a sudden sudden sharp jerk and she flipped herself clear out of the chair and landed nearly on neatly on her two feet on the carpet. That's terrific, Grandma, George said. You haven't stood up like that for years. Look at you. 
You standing up all on your own, you're not even using a stick. Grandma didn't even hear him. The frozen, pop-eyed look was back with her again now. She was miles away in another world. Marvellous medicine, George told himself. He found it fascinating to stand there watching what was it was what it was doing to the old hag. What next, he wondered. He soon found out. Suddenly, she began to grow. It was quite slow at first, just a very gradual inching upwards, up, 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 inch by inch, getting taller and taller, about an inch every few seconds. And in the beginning, George didn't notice it. But when she had passed the five foot six mark and was going on up, being six foot tall, George gave a jump and shouted, Hey, Grandma, you're growing! You're going up! Hang on, Grandma, you better stop now or you'll hit the ceiling! But Grandma didn't stop. It was a fascinating sight. This ancient scrawly old woman getting taller and taller and longer and longer and thinner and thinner, although she was in a piece of elastic being pulled upwards by invisible hands. When the top of her head actually touched the ceiling, George thought she was bound to stop, but she didn't. There was a sort of scrunching noise, and bits of plaster and cement came raining down. Hadn't you better stop now, Grandma? George shouted. Daddy's just had this whole room repainted. But there was no stopping her now. Soon her head and her shoulders had completely disappeared through the ceiling, and she was still going. George dashed upstairs to his own bedroom, and there she was coming through the floor like a mushroom, Whoopee! she shouted, finding her voice at last. Hallelujah! Here I come! Steady on, Grandma, George said. With a hey, noddy do, and up we go, she shouted. Just watch me grow! This is my room, George said. Look at the mess you're making. Terrific medicine, she cried. Give me some more! She's as dossy as a donut, George thought. Come on, boy, give me some more, she yelled. Dish it out, I'm slowing down. George was still clutching the medicine bottle in one hand and the spoon in another. Oh, well, he thought, why not? He poured out a second dose and popped it in her mouth. Owie! She screamed and up she went again. Her feet were still on the floor downstairs in the living room, but her head was moving quickly towards the ceiling of the bedroom. I'm on my way now, boy, she called to George. Just watch me go. There's the attic above you, Grandma. George called out. I'd keep out of there. It's full of bugs and bogles. Crash! The old girl's head went through the ceiling as though it were butter. George stood in his bed bedroom gazing at the shambles there was a big hole in the floor and another in the ceiling and sticking up in like a post in between the two was the middle part of grandma her legs were in the room below her head in the attic i'm still going came the old screechy voice from up above give me another dose boy let's go through the roof no grandma no george called called back you're busting the whole house to heck with the house she said i wanted some fresh air i haven't been outside for 20 years by golly, she is going through the roof, George told himself. He ran downstairs. He rushed out of the back door into the yard. It would be simply awful, he thought, if she bashed up the roof as well. His father would be furious and he, George, would get the blame. He had made the medicine. He had given her too much. Don't come through the roof, Grandma, he pleaded. Please don't. To see what happens next time.